Hello everyone, David here. This is the Asus ROG Ally, and I think it is a really cool little handheld gaming device. I would go as far as to say it is better than the Steam Deck, not in every way, but in some important ways, but it's not a perfect device either. It's got some problems, uh, but I think a lot of those can actually be resolved in software updates and fixes down the line. Okay, let's get into it. So first of all, what's so good about it? Well, um, I love the size and weight. It's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than the Steam Deck, which means that it's very comfortable to carry around with you or to use around the house. Um, I think the ergonomics of it are very good. Um, my hands naturally fall into a good position to reach all of the buttons and nothing is out of reach. I kind of hold up the 8-bit Doe Ultimate gamepad as kind of my ideal gamepad for feel and layout and size. And I'd say that the ROG Ally is actually pretty close to that. There are some issues with the thumbstick dead zones. I think they're fixable, but we'll come on to that later. In terms of ports, we've got a headphone jack, a SD card slot, USB-C port, which is also used for charging, and it also has the proprietary uh, connection there for the Asus external GPUs, if you want to get one of those. Uh, and then over here, a power button and fingerprint reader, which works for logging into Windows. Apart from that, you have a pretty standard Xbox controller style layout um, with some additional buttons. On the bottom left, you have this one, which opens and closes the control center. Bottom right, you have this one, which uh, shows and hides uh, Armory Crate, which is Asus's own software for launching games and apps. Uh, back button, start button, and then two interesting paddles at the back and uh, you can set these up to actually do something when you click them on their own but typically what um, is set up as the default and I think most people leave it that, that way is to hold down a paddle and then press a button like up on the keypad and that will do some macro like showing your keyboard. Um, you can configure those to do whatever you like within Armory Crate as well. The joysticks also have RGB which is fine, I don't know, it looks kind of cool most of the time. Um, if you're playing late at night and it's dark, they do really shine out. Um, but you can turn all of that stuff off if you want. So yeah, generally really nice layout of controls and very comfortable to hold. So what are any of the reasons to buy this over a Steam Deck? Well, it has a higher resolution screen to start with. The Steam Deck is 1280 by 800, and this is 1920 by 1080, so it's a very standard 16 by 9 1080p screen. And I have to say that the graphics look incredibly sharp uh, and beautiful on this small screen. Um, I didn't hate 800p, but I think I prefer 1080p, definitely now that I've tried it on a screen of this size. Um, the screen is also very bright, has great contrast, and uh, shows colors really nicely as well. Uh, the speakers are really great, and the vibration is okay. I wouldn't say it's particularly good or bad. Probably the single biggest difference between the Ally and the Steam Deck is that this comes installed with Windows by default, and that has some great benefits like uh, Dead or Alive 6, which never quite worked right on the Steam Deck, just works here because it's the platform it was developed for. Um, something like Honkai Star Rail, I don't think you can even install that on a Steam Deck, but it just works because it's Windows. So that's great, um, but it does come with all of the Windows baggage as well. So there are some issues related to uh, standby and resume. Uh, you might get a Windows update that forces your device to restart. Uh, you might leave it plugged in and find it's turned the screen on for some reason uh, after a certain amount of time. But if you want a kind of holistic, polished device uh, where Valve controls every aspect of their operating system, you might still prefer the Steam Deck experience because the standby and resume just works. So it kind of depends which camp you want to fall into. Do you want greater compatibility or do you want a more polished UI and operating system experience? Um, for me, I prefer this approach, especially if they can resolve some of the issues with the OS. You can bet that Asus are looking at it, and maybe even Microsoft too, um, because uh, they are definitely becoming more aware of this growing handheld PC market, and uh, it would be foolish of them not to spend a little bit of time improving their OS for devices like these. The Ally also benefits from being about a year younger or newer than the Steam Deck. It has a new AMD chip inside it, which means that even on its 1080p screen, so it's got more pixels to render, it can still render games at higher frame rate or higher detail, especially when you crank up the power settings. Whereas the Steam Deck is limited to about 15 watts, 
this can go all the way up to 25 watts on battery or 30 if you keep it plugged in and activate turbo mode. Um, so something like Hogwarts Legacy, which I never got running well on the Steam Deck, actually runs okay on the Ally. And of course, it will run um, older games or simpler games very well as well. Um, you can limit the power settings on the Ally. You don't have to do everything at 25 watts. Um, you can run at 15 and a lot of games still run great. Uh, a good kind of midpoint is to set a manual power setting of about 18 watts. That gives it just a little bit more juice to um, be able to pump out some more frames and it won't completely tear through your battery. In terms of battery life, well, it's got the same capacity battery as a Steam Deck, but I kind of feel the whole point of this device is to throw more power at some games and get that extra performance. So you might find you end up burning through that battery capacity a bit quicker on the Ally. Worst case, you might get 45 minutes to an hour of battery life, two hours on more conservative settings. Um, but if you are plugging in regularly um, or just playing it plugged in, but in a different location, um, then you're not gonna have any of those problems anyway. So in terms of accessories, I did try a couple of cases. Um, first of all, I actually got this one from TomTok, which is actually designed to be a switch case um, for third-party controllers. So it's got a bit of, bit of extra space on the left and right here. And this fits the Ally quite well. I mean, it goes in there, but it does depress the triggers down while it's sitting inside. Um, and it's a very snug fit. Um, so it was not designed for the Ally and it kind of shows. Um, I also had to cut away a small strip of fabric here to uh, get it into the case. So this was my first attempt. It kind of works. It's a nice hard case, but I can't honestly recommend it because it leaves those triggers pressed down while it's inside. Um, and yeah, it, it feels a little too snug to be comfortable. My actual recommendation is the official Asus ROG Ally case. Um, it's a little bit softer, um, but I like that actually. I really like the design on it. Um, and yeah, it fits it very snugly without you know, forcibly pressing down any of the buttons at the time. Uh, so that feels nice and slim and I can see myself traveling with the official case much more often. So yeah, cases, just go official unless you can find something newer and really cool. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the Nreal, or I should say Xreal uh, AR glasses. Now, I did cover these when uh, I discussed how they worked with the Steam Deck, and they work pretty much the same way here. You pop them on your head, uh, you then have a single USB-C connector, which carries um, power to the glasses and the display input, and there's a single USB-C port on the top of the Ally, so you plug it into there, and it detects it as an external display, and then you see it in front of your eyes instead of on the screen. And in general, uh, this works great. Uh, it's just plug and play, and now I've got a giant screen in front of my face. But it has all of the same problems uh, that it did with the Steam Deck as well. Uh, so the screen moves with my face as I move around. And for some people that will be quite nauseating and disorientating. I'm kind of used to it, but it still bugs me. However, Xreal are bringing their Nebula software to Windows, so pretty soon you'll be able to download Nebula for Windows and then get that AR screen locked in place in front of you, and you can move your head around and the screen will stay in the same position. So that's really cool. Um, it will, I think, have the same problems as when I tried it on Mac, in that the screen is a bit laggy. So you might end up moving your head and the screen starts to move with you before realizing you're moving and then snapping back in place. So it will have this kind of like laggy feeling where it's just hovering in 3D rather than being really locked in. And I think that's a restriction of the glasses and the hardware. Um, we kind of need another generation of these glasses with uh, reduced lag because when we get that screen just locked in place, like um, Apple are suggesting we will with their Vision Pro, then we're gonna have a really cool uh, kind of extra display device that we can wear on our face with a pair of glasses like these. So at the moment, I recommend you use them in their most basic mode. And um, if you are happy with the screen moving with your head as you move it, uh, then that's fine. Um, you can try Nebula for Windows when it comes out to see how you like that. Um, but all in all, um, it's gonna be really cool when the next generation of these come out. 
In terms of screen protectors, um, I usually get one for my devices like these because I hate scratches on my screen. Uh, so I went and got the D-Brand one, which was really good. Unfortunately, I messed up applying it because I'm also a perfectionist. And if it's just slightly askew, that's no good. I have to take it off and then use another one. So I actually got through both of the screen protectors that D-Brand sent, because you get two in a pack. And then I just bought a cheap one off Amazon. And this was about eight pounds. And to be honest, it gets the job done, but I don't think it's as good as the D-Brand one. So I've ordered another D-Brand one and I'm gonna try applying that when I get it. By the way, I might be recommending certain brands, but they are not sponsors of me. In this video, all of my opinions are my own. And if I recommend a brand, it's because I really think they're good. Final accessory I want to talk about um, is just this little stand. So it does come with like this quite handy little cardboard stand in the box, but I found it was a bit deeper than I wanted it to, and it was taking up too much space on my bedside table. So I got this little one from uh, JS Orcs. It was not expensive um, and it just functions as a stand and nothing else. And it's very convenient for plopping down. And then I plug the charger in at the top. JS Orcs also do uh, a cool dock with HDMI and extra USB outputs um, if you want to go that route instead. In terms of chargers, I picked up this very small Ugreen 65 watt. Um, charger is one of the new Gallium ones. It's got two USB-C outs and a USB-A um, and it folds away very nicely and yeah, doesn't weigh much um, so I can shove it in my bag and almost forget about it. Um, and it's enough to charge the Ally and play in turbo mode up to 30 watts. So I've been very positive about this device so far and don't get me wrong, I do think it's great, but it has its fair share of problems at the moment. Um, First of all, probably the most severe is the SD card reader, which some people have complained um, makes their SD card unreadable. Um, it's the, the jury's out on whether it's exactly a hardware or software issue. Um, some people say it's overheating. I haven't had that problem, so I can't comment any more than that, but it, it's something to look out for. Um, the problem I have experienced is the dead zones on the joysticks. So it's something uh, the tech chap noticed during his review, and I was really hoping um, he was wrong, but he wasn't, he was right. Um, just a little bit of input can be ignored by the joystick. It's like classic dead zone, but the dead zone is too big. And if you fire up a game like Halo, the Master Chief collection, you'll notice it feels kind of sluggish to respond because you're moving the joystick around and it's taking that bit longer to get a response. Um, now, I'm sure this isn't a hardware issue because if you go into the Steam input settings, you'll notice that just a tiny movement on the joystick is picked up by the software. And you can in fact override some of your games to use Steam input instead as a workaround and then add an anti-dead zone setting um, that can actually make the game feel more responsive again. But I kind of feel like there's an underlying problem that Asus need to solve. There's some extra dead zone being added by Armory Crate or their controller emulation, something like that, something along the way that I think they can fix. Um, a problem that I wouldn't have known about if it wasn't for the internet is that sometimes uh, the joysticks can make a kind of rubbing or scratching noise. I wouldn't have noticed unless I saw a video and then I noticed that my right joystick is just a little bit scratchy at the bottom and the top. I don't know if you can hear that. It's very slight in my case and doesn't bother me, but some people have very notorious clicking. Another issue is just with general kind of Windows software. So um, I expect when you press the power button, it just turns off like this. And when you press the power button again, it just turns on. So this time it did it, which is great. But I've found that after playing a game, I can go to press the button and just nothing happens. Um, I have to really hold the button down for a long time and then eventually it turns off. And then I'll put it back in its dock and plug it in and then it'll turn itself back on. And that's not really the behavior I want. I kind of want, if I plug it in, I just want it to start charging, not necessarily turn the screen on. So there's a few kind of behaviors that I wish Asus could uh, completely fix. Another thing you may want to watch out for and I think is really just a consequence of being built on top of Windows is which control scheme you're using at any one time. Uh, I did have an issue where um, if I loaded up RetroArch which I had installed through Steam, um, and I started it from Steam big picture mode. It then went into a funny control scheme where um, it thought that 
uh, just pressing B at any time was quit. So if I pressed B twice in a row, it would quit RetroArch completely, and there was no other way to go back normally. Um, this seems to be fixed now in an Armory Crate update, um, but if you have problems with it, just make sure you go to the control scheme and then set it to a specifically gamepad if you want to use it for a gamepad type of game, um, or a desktop if you need to navigate the desktop using the right stick. Um, hopefully now, with the latest updates, you can leave it in auto and it'll get the right control mechanism most of the time. So, onto some of my favorite games. Um, I'm gonna start with Dead or Alive 6 because I found that I was having a lot of fun playing this. Um, handheld, it just kind of suits handheld play really nicely. The game itself is kind of plagued with having too much DLC and it, it, it looks really money grabby, but it is actually a good game and, it, and it's pretty fun. Um, I kind of hope they could make a Dead or Alive 7 with um, some of the lessons learned from this one, um, but we'll wait and see. The, the franchise feels a bit dead in the water at the moment, but Dead or Alive 6 on the Ally works really well. Hogwarts Legacy is another one that um, I think is really fun on the Ally. Um, it looks gorgeous on this screen. And I've made the settings uh, in Steam to uh, add the anti-dead zone settings. So um, it's a little bit more responsive on the joysticks now. Um, I play this in native 1080p and uh, I keep it on the highest turbo mode setting available at the time because it really needs it. Um, there are a few little stutters every now and then, but generally it's really playable. Here you are. I'm pleased to see you took my advice. Madam Thistlewood, I met your great uncle in his portrait in my common room. He sent me to speak to you. Uh, I loved Persona 5, and Persona 5 Strikers runs pretty well on the Ally. Um, I've got it set here onto my 18 watt manual mode, but it runs pretty well at 15 watts as well. Uh, the 25 watt turbo mode is a bit overkill for this. I think this is the kind of game that is, you know, fun on a desktop PC, but really kind of comes into its own on a handheld. You know, it's, there's something more fun about playing it on the move. Um, Tales of Arise was fine on Steam Deck, um, but I feel like it really shines here on the Ally. Just um, the boost to 1080p really makes the game look uh, a lot more pretty. Um, and I find I get a bit better performance as well. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's an action game, so it's more fun at a higher frame rate. Um, yeah, it looks gorgeous and uh, really fun to play this one. So Lacuna is a pixel art adventure game. Um, it looks really fun. Uh, I'm running this at the 15 watt performance mode, and as you can see, I'm getting a pretty locked 120 frames a second. I'd expect to get pretty decent battery life uh, with this. Um, it looks like a really fun game. I'm looking forward to playing through the rest of it. So Cyberpunk runs, uh, okay. Um, I can't bring myself to lower the resolution, so I've still got it set at 1080p, um, mostly low settings, and just throw as much power as you can at it on turbo mode. And uh, I'm getting over 30 frames a second most of the time. You know, it's really playable. And then you've got Cyberpunk on the move. How cool is that? Yeah, so RetroArch uh, works really well uh, on the Ally. Um, it's very simple to install using Steam, um, and then you install the cores that you want on top of that. Uh, and then you've got, uh, you know, all of your favorite old classic games uh, in the palm of your hand. Um, I can't imagine I'm gonna be playing an awful lot of games this way, but it's kind of fun to have some of my favorite Mega Drive games from my youth um, ready to go this way. Yeah, so it's been 20 years or so since I played through the Halo 2 campaign, uh, and I'm really enjoying doing that again on the Ally. Uh, this is on performance mode, um, and I'm still getting 60 frames a second or so at 1080p. Um, looks great, runs really nicely. It's really fun to blast through it again. Um, and you can even select um, custom playlists uh, as part of the Halo 2 Anniversary Edition, so you can just play through the Master Chief sections uh, if you want to.
One thing I do recommend you do is you turn on the anti-dead zone settings in Steam Input just to give yourself a bit more of a responsive experience uh, while you're playing through. Yeah, so Honkai Star Rail works great on the Ally. Um, this is in performance mode, 15 watts, still getting kind of 40 to 60 frames a second, and uh, looks really good. This is in high detail as well. Uh, it's really nice to be able to play this on the move um, without draining the battery on my phone. And I do prefer playing this with a controller as well. Um, so yeah, this is something you wouldn't really be able to do with the Steam Deck. Um, and yeah, here it is, working great on the Ally. Let's make it quick. We're just having fun. And ultimately, you know, this is a Windows computer at its heart. So um, anything you could do with a Windows laptop, you can now do uh, with your Ally. And since I have a Mac laptop, but not a Windows laptop, this could actually be my Windows machine on the move. So there you go, that's my review of the Ally, and as you can tell, uh, I think it's a pretty cool device. Would I recommend you get one? Well, if you don't already have a Steam Deck, then yes, I think the Ally is a better device, you should choose that one. If you already have a Steam Deck, then it's a bit of a harder proposition. Um, if you really want that 1080p screen, um, or some of the extra performance that you get from the new Zen 4 chips, then yes, I could probably recommend you get the Ally as well, if you can afford it. Um, but yeah, if you already have a Steam Deck, this device does so much and it's still so cool. They're, they're not really leagues apart. I, I'd say I prefer this one, but they're kind of the same kind of uh, device and they're the same generation, I would say. Um, having said all that, I still end up playing a whole load on my Switch. Um, partly because it's so small and thin and light, it's very easy to throw in my bag. And Tears of the Kingdom is an absolutely fantastic game. Now, uh, Zelda can be emulated on certain other devices, um, but it still runs better on the Switch. It's still an overall smoother experience there. If you have any other tips for using the Ally or any of your favorite games, I'd like to know about them in the comment section down below. And um, yeah, leave me a like, and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.